Hello, welcome back to Math 155. Today we're going to be continuing this last section of the course where we're looking into uh, discrete mathematics. Uh, we've already talked about counting, now we're going to be talking about graphs. Now graphs are used um, quite extensively in uh, the life sciences. Uh, for example, uh, if we are looking at the transmission of infectious diseases, we might want to represent those uh, people in a population or animals or plants as these vertices or nodes and the connections between them or edges can describe possibilities, possible routes for uh, transmission. So uh, that's one example of, of how we might use uh, these graphs um, in the life sciences. Uh, they can also be used to represent food webs. We're gonna be talking about things called directed graphs or digraphs. And if we now have arrows on these edges here that can represent the uh, flow of energy in a food web. So these could be different species. For example, this could be grass, this could be rabbits, these could be foxes, maybe mice here. Graphs are also used extensively to represent phylogenies. So thinking about some genetic changes in a population over time, you can think about some sort of ancestral state up here. This is being a, an ancestor, and then we can think about its descendants. So these are used very extensively to understand um, the, the relationships, whether that's uh, genetic relationships. Um, this could also be used for pedigrees as well. Um, it cannot be used to represent um, just characters or, or morphological uh, variation as well. So there are lots of different ways in which we can use graphs or sometimes called networks um, in the life sciences. So we're going to talk today about what graphs are and, and how um, we can talk about them in terms of things like their degree and paths along these um, networks. And then uh, next time we're going to be uh, thinking about some applications of them. Okay, so what is a graph? Well, it's a discrete structure. Remember, this is discrete mathematics that we're talking about here. It's a discrete structure consisting of vertices and edges, and those edges connect vertices. So, um, for example, here we have a graph on the left hand side and we have what's referred to as a vertex or node set. And this is just set V of all of the vertices. So here we've got V1, V2, V3, and V4. And we can have a set of the edges, which we'll call capital E. And this is all my edges, E1, E2, and so on up to E8. So we usually write a graph, G is equal to this vertex set and this edge set together. So for this example down here, what's our vertex set? Well, our vertex set V, it's just gonna be the vertices V1, V2, and so on, up to, I believe we have seven of them here, V7, and then our edges, going to be our E's, E1, E2, and so on, up to E8. Note that we can classify this as still one graph, even though it's not connected. So we'll talk a little bit at, at various points about whether graphs are connected or not. There's no connection between um, all of the vertices here, but we can still treat this as, as one graph. Okay, so what is a loop? Well, a loop is what it sounds like, basically. It's something like this, where we have a vertex with an edge going straight back, so looping back on itself onto that vertex. So what are our loops here? Our loops are our edges E1 and E7. What about parallel edges? Well, we see here, if we look at E3 and E6, they both link V4 and V5. So if I was to pull this out here, just thinking about V4 and V5, we have an edge going along like this, which is my E3, with another edge going along E6. So these are parallel edges because they are linking the same vertices. So E3 and E6 are parallel edges. And then isolated vertices, and this is kind of what it sounds like, it's a vertex that it doesn't have any edges. It's not connected to any other vertices. So V3 has no edges, so V3 is 
isolated. So the terminologies there, they kind of sound like um, what they are. So um, that shouldn't be too difficult to remember. They're fairly intuitive. Okay, so the next terminology we need to think about is degree. And the degree of a vertex in a graph, so if we have a vertex little v in our vertex set capital V, it's the number of edges in E that are incident. So that means that, that join up with our vertex V. So an edge that is a loop. So we had these edges up here, this one, and this one, they're counted twice, okay? So if we think about this graph we've got down here, we can think about what is the degree of each of our vertices, okay? So let's pick V1 to start with. So we say that the degree, which we write dg, of that vertex is going to equal, all we need to do is count everything that's coming in and coming out. So we just need to count up. There's one edge there. There's two edges there. This is from the same, um, this is the same edge, but there, it has an in and an out, if you think about it. There isn't, there's no direction on this graph, but you can think of if that helps you um, visualize it. It joins in two places, so we need to count it twice. There's also this edge here and this edge here. So we have a two plus one plus one is equal to four. So the degree of our vertex V1 is equal to four. You can go through and do this for all of the vertices. So for example, degree of V2, that's V2 down here, count up all the edges that are incident, so they're connected to it. Here we have, one plus one plus one plus one is equal to four again. Let's see, uh, V3, which is down here. We have one, two, three. Degree of V3 is equal to three. I'll leave the rest of those for you as an exercise. Now the total degree, we can think about of all of the degrees summed up. So we have, in this case, uh, I believe seven vertices. Uh, oh no, we've got six vertices. We've got six vertices here. So to work out our total degree, all we need to do is we just sum all of these up. So degree of V1 plus degree of V2 plus and so on, all the way to degree of V6. And this has a nice relationship with our um, number of edges. So we write down our total number of edges, capital E, with these, uh, these uh, vertical lines either side. In this case, if we count up all the edges, we have 10 edges here. E10 is our highest index edge. So we have 10 indices here. If you work out the degree for all of the, um, all of the vertices in this graph, you'll find that the total degree is equal to 20, which is 2e. So in general, we can say that the sum of the degree of every vertex in a graph is twice the number of edges. Hopefully this should be fairly intuitive. If we've got, say, two vertices here and here and an edge between them, then this edge is adding one to the degree of the one on the left and one to the degree of the one on the right. And if we have a vertex with a loop, then this is adding one here to the degree and one here to the degree. So every edge always adds two to the total degree. Okay, we can now start to think about paths and what it means for um, vertices to be connected. So a path is just defined to be a finite sequence. So one that has a limited number of, um, of uh, edges and vertices. So all we do is we say we're starting here at V0, our first vertex. It could be any of the vertices here. Um, but this, in this particular path, we're gonna say V0. We follow an edge E1 to V1. And we follow another edge E2 to V2 and so on. And all of the vertices and edges, so we go vertex, edge, vertex, edge. It's just describing how you are moving through a particular graph. Okay, so we say because there are n different vertices, uh, or sorry, there are n plus one different vertices here, because we actually start at zero, but there are n edges here, um, that means that we have a path of length n. 
which is equal to the number of edges. So let's think of uh, examples here of different paths. For example, we could follow a path that goes around here. That is just a path starting at V1, going along E1, and then ending again at V1. We could think of some longer paths, for example, suppose I start here at V2, I go along to V6, I'm going to go down this edge here to V5, and along to V3. This is an example of an open path, so I'll just draw this down here. So we started at V2, we went along E10 to V6, and then along E8 to V5, and then along E7 to V3. So it's an open path because it doesn't um, uh, end back at the, the, the same vertex that we started at. If I added this in here, I'm going to copy this. So going almost the same, but now I'm going to add on this additional step here where I go along E4 and then up, end up back at V2 because these two here are the same we have a closed path. This is also an example of a closed path. It's a, it is what it sounds like. The, the start and the end point is the same. Okay, so that's paths. Now, what does it mean then for a graph to be connected? And this is fairly intuitive. Um, a graph is connected if for any two vertices that we choose, so in our vertex set, so vertices u and v in our vertex set, there is a path from u to v. So in this example above, I could choose any starting uh, vertex, choose any other one, for example, this one, there is a path that links these two. And I can do that for any of the vertices here. That means that our graph is connected. So this example here, on the right hand side, g2, I can pick any two vertices in this graph, and I can draw a path between them. This one on the left-hand side, I can say, if, uh, if I start here at V1, I can find a path to V2, but I can't find a path between V1 and V4. And since I can't find a path between V1 and V4, that means that G1 is disconnected, whereas it's not connected, whereas G2 is connected. And we can say that if a graph like G1 is disconnected, then we can decompose it. In other words, we can split it up into a series of mutually disjoint connected graphs. In other words, we can break it down into separate um, uh, graphs, and each of those graphs eventually will, if we break it down enough, those will be um, connected. So if, for example, we break this down into a graph here where V4 is just by itself, and we have another graph here, v1, v2, and v3, mm. with the edges between them. Each of those are mutually disjoint. In other words, they don't um, have any shared vertices or edges. And each of those is connected. We had an example up here as well, where we could have done the same. I could have broken this down into these three different mutually disjoint graphs. Mutually disjoint, remember, just means that they don't have any shared vertices or edges. And when I break them down enough, then um, we end up with uh, those um, subgraphs being um, uh, fully connected. Of course, if I've just broken it down into these two mutually disjoint graphs, this one on the left-hand side isn't connected, but I can break it down further into these ones here. So there is always some point where we could break them down and they become mutually disjoint and connected. Okay, the final bit of uh, terminology today um, deals with things called directed graphs. Now, directed graphs are very similar to our graphs that we have before, that we've already met so far. So this is the type of graph that we've already met. The big difference is that we have these arrows. And these arrows um, show direction. That's why it's called a directed graph. It's also usually abbreviated to digraph, just for short. So if every edge in our graph has a direction, then it is a digraph. Okay, so this one at the top here 
is a digraph. And we say that the one underneath, if we remove all those arrows, then this is called the underlying graph. Okay, so there are obviously for, starting from one underlying graph, there are lots of ways in which we could turn this into a digraph. For example, this here is a digraph with the same underlying um, graph, uh, but uh, the edges are, are different, or sorry, the, the directions are different uh, along those edges. Because these are these directions exist, there is a there's a start point and an end point. We can talk about initial and terminal points that just means starts and end points. Like I said, we have this underlying graph. Um, we can also talk about an arc going from, from one, um, one vertex to another. This links in with ideas of in degree and out degree, which is a generalization of our degree that we had before. So if you remember all the way back up here, we talked about the degree, so the number of um, edges that come in and out of a, um, a vertex. I say in and out of here, there is no in and out. They just, they're just connected, they're incident with it. When we have a digraph, then they uh, do have an in and out. And all we do is count up all the arrows that point into a vertex, and that becomes our in degree. And our out degree is all of our arrows that point out of a vertex. So for example, if I want to work out my in degree, bring it to indeg, of say V2, this one here. I'm counting all the arrows that point in. So how many arrows point in? We've got one, two, three. And how many arrows point out? Well, this one points out here, and this one points out here as well. So our out degree of V2 is equal to two. Obviously our in degree and our out degree would have to sum up to be our degree in our underlying graph. So if we go, it's the same underlying graph as above. If we just calculate the degree of V2, we'll see that the degree of V2 is five. When it's a digraph here, the in degree and the out degree have to sum to be the degree. Lastly, then we can think about a directed path within our digraph. And all that is, is previously when we were working out paths, back up here. We could go in any direction we wanted. So we could follow around here if I wanted. I could go this way. I could go back that way. I could go down here and so on. It didn't matter which way I went because there were no arrows here. On a digraph, we have to follow the arrows. We can't go, for example, from V2 to V1 because this edge connecting them points from V1 to V2. So these will be very important when we come to deal with our food webs next time out, because if we imagine this as being um, one species eating another species, so for example, if I call this grass and this V2 here rabbits, rabbits eat grass, and so there is a flow of energy from grass to rabbits. We can't go in the opposite direction because grass doesn't eat rabbits. So the, the, if we have a directed path, all that means is this is a path that follows a particular set of directions. So for example, right, this is a directed path. I'm following the direction of those arrows. And I can't, I should go that way. I can't uh, go back on myself essentially. Okay, that is everything that we're going to cover in terms of an introduction to the terminologies uh, related to graphs. Uh, make sure you're familiar with uh, these ideas of degree um, and what we mean when we say a path, connected graph, and a digraph especially. Okay, thanks very much.